Hello guys. So, continuation part two, Matt and Moy. Quick recap, Matt, English lad, came to my bar, been to Pate before, backwards and forwards over eight months, he's gone from UK to Thailand, he's fallen in love, fallen for Moy, one of my girls. This girl is the one I call Ruthless, or will become apparent. So, we left it that Matt was going to go back to the UK, work for probably six months, get enough money to come back over and marry Moy in a Thai ceremony in her village. They've gone to the airport again, she said goodbye to him, he's given her enough money to leave the bar now and go and live in the village, start arranging ceremony plans for the marriage in the village. Off he goes, on his plane. Moy, complete U-turn, straight back to the bar. Mm. It only takes 24 hours to arrange a Thai ceremony in the village if you do it right. She's not sure he is going to come back and marry her, so why go to the village? Let him pay her some money, she'll carry on working. But he thinks she's in the village. Mm. Okay, this happens a lot. She comes back to the bar and tells me everything that's gone on, yeah. Okay, six months, maybe seven months pass and she gets the phone call, he's booked his flight, he's coming back for them to get married. She leaves the bar, heads up to the village and arranges the basics with her family, tells them that it is going to be a marriage in the village, she's got to go to Bangkok and meet Matt and She'll stay in Bangkok for a couple of nights and get a wedding dress and a suit for him sorted out. Then come back to the village and then they'll do the ceremony. So, does the village, down to the airport, meets Matt. He's raised about five or six thousand pounds in that six, seven months. Um, is it enough? Well, Moy had indicated to him, small village, small family, smallish ceremony going to be about two and a half thousand pounds three thousand dollars so <coughs> they go into Bangkok a couple of days get a suit made get a dress made for her usually takes about 24 hours and head up to the village now over the following three or four days everything is put in place for a Thai ceremony it's not going to be huge she hasn't got much family, they haven't got any money. And Matt is limited. So the day comes. They're in the dress, suit, photos, makeup. They go into a room in her mother's sister's house, the bit bigger house, where they have laid offerings for the monks and a bit of money on the table little bit of gold on the table, borrowed from somewhere. Go through the ceremony and get married. Now this ceremony is a Thai ceremony, but it doesn't count for anything legally. To make it legal, you would have to go to uh, an AMPA, uh, like a registry office, and get married there, in front of a uh, clerk or judge or whatever it is. And, and then you can register it with your embassy. Or you can get married in your own country, in the registry office or a church, and do it that way. So they have done the Thai ceremony. Done and dusted. Everyone's happy. Moy has gained face in the village. She's married a foreigner, a Farang. Very good. Matt then tells Moy that he wants to take her back to the UK and he believes it's a tourist six month visa or a fiance visa if they're going to marry in the UK um, and they would have to go to Bangkok to do this. This is amazing news for Moy. You can imagine Thai girl brought up in a village, okay she's worked in the bar for a few years, finally hooks her foreigner, gets married in the village, everyone in the village is happy. She's almost becoming queen of the village. And now she announces to them all in the village 
that she is going to live in the UK. She's misinterpreted that slightly. Taurus is her fiance for six months first, come back backwards and forwards to get it all sorted. But she's told them all she's going to live in the UK. That has now gained her more face in the village. And she is the queen of the village. So they all say goodbye to the village and they head down to Bangkok. Get a hotel. Back in 2000, this was 2000, yeah, 2000, 2001, the system with the UK embassy. Nowadays, there's an agency called VFS, which looks after all the visas and then puts it into the embassy. In the old days, you went straight to the embassy. So Matt had already prepared for this in his mind when he came back, he brought some paperwork and they went to the embassy in queue, got inside, put the application together and paid the money, whatever it was, put the application in. It would take a week before they hear anything. Uh, sometimes an interview is requested with the Thai girl, sometimes with the foreigner as well, with the British subject. So at least a week. So they put all the paperwork in, visa application, to take Moy to the UK. Now Matt says we might as well have a honeymoon for this week. We've got mobile phones, they've got our contact details. As long as we stay within near an airport that we can get back to Bangkok, um, be no problem. So they choose Krabi, I believe it was. Uh, was it Phuket? I think Krabi. Onang, yeah. They fly down to Krabi and they have a week in Onang by the beach. Nice hotel. Uh, honeymoon. Beautiful, fabulous, all good. And Moy's, oh, this is perfect for her. She's, uh, he's the special one, he's the one. Phone call comes towards the end of the week. We want to interview both of you uh, at the UK Embassy in Bangkok. Uh, so Moy arranges for the two days later on the morning. So they finish in Krabi, airplane, back to Bangkok, get a hotel. The morning comes, off they go to the embassy, and Moy is interviewed first in a little kiosk, just up there, a screen, a Thai person and an English clearance agent, clearance officer behind the screen, asking her questions. All seems to be okay. Then she's sent back out, and Matt is called in, and they quiz him uh, about his accommodation in the UK, his intentions, and his finances, and his job. At this point they send him out, they will uh, have to wait an hour and then they'll get a letter with a passport in it with visa etc. So they go back out waiting room, out in the courtyard wandering around. Number comes up or the, over the tannoy, they go to the window, get the letter, excited, we'll sit down, we'll sit down and open it all up. Fail. Visa request denied and reasons they're always very vague but it comes down to Matt did not have sufficient funds in his available to him his accommodation was um, barely suitable and he didn't work for a company driving a lorry he was self-employed worked when he wanted so there was no evidence of guaranteed income and they thought that therefore Moy might have had to do some cash work which is illegal to work on a visa in the UK um, and there may be recourse to public uh, funds as in healthcare or something refused you cannot apply again I'm not sure if it's a month or three months I I think it's three months, might even be six. Failed. The appeal process would take a month and a half if they want to appeal. Cannot apply again for, say, three months. Devastated. Both of them devastated. And it's right, Matt didn't have any money back in the UK. He had a room he rented. He worked for a lorry companies, but he wasn't employed. And it was right, he wouldn't have been able to, he'd have had to go 
back to the UK and work all the time, leaving Moy on, Moy on her own in the room to fend for herself. It wasn't fair. They came out of the embassy and uh, went to a cafe. Devastated both of them. Um, couldn't do anything. So now, again, getting low on funds, Matt is going to have to go back to the UK on his own. He says to Moy, you go back to the village, I'll give you some money now, I'll send you money, we'll figure this out, I'll go back to work, I'll raise everything I've got to do to fix this. Now Moy, again, not wanting to lose face, just agrees, yes, yes, yes. Next day, Matt's rebooked his ticket to get home. Uh, he's going to go back and see what he can do. He's got no family, he's got no way of raising enough big money to sort it out. He's just going to have to work, put his head down, whatever. They go to the airport. Matt gives her enough money for two months. And says, go to the village, I'll send you money. Sorry, we'll get this sorted. They say goodbye, gets on the plane. Now, Moy, if she goes back to the village, she will lose face in uh, in a huge way because she's just got married to a foreigner and now she's coming back to the village without the foreigner and she was going to live in England and now she's not living in England. She would lose so much face, too much of an embarrassment. She can't go back to the village and there's no guarantee he's going to come back again even though they've married in the village. What's she do? Yep, yeah, straight back to my bar. Turns up, tells me everything. She, uh, she lost face. But what to do? What to do? Back to work. And that's what she does. Straight back to work. Ho ho ho. Hmm. Let's leave it there. There's one part more, maybe two parts, we'll see. We'll see. But again, oh, it's just looking obvious where this is going. It really is, isn't it? So many people do the same path. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.